Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm here with Joyce Sidman. Joyce, thank you so much for talking with us about your new book from Erdman's, Hello Earth. So tell us a little bit about your book. Well, um, I have a copy of it here, an author's copy, and uh, here it is. And I'm very excited about it. Um, it's a book of letter poems from the children of Earth to the Earth itself. And I have to say it started out in a very different way than most of my books. Um, I was contacted by Erdman's by Kathleen Murs of Erdman's and she said she had bought the rights, the illustration rights to a Spanish book and wanted me to create completely new poems for those illustrations. So as you know, usually books start in the minds of authors and um, proceed from there and the illustrators uh, interpret the author's text. But in this case, I was going to be taking illustrations and trying to write to the illustrations. So I wasn't sure I wanted to do it at first. I, I just wasn't sure I could make someone else's vision my own, if you know mm. what I mean. Yeah, do, using and different muscles, yeah. It definitely is, and um, but I looked at the, the, the illustrations and they really, they're really so lovely and whimsical and almost folk art style. And in all of them, there were these tiny children doing all kinds of brave things like diving into the ocean and swimming next to whales. And uh, I was just captivated by them and thought, maybe I can tell a story from their point of view. So I focused on them and I made sure that I was allowed to leave out certain illustrations and also reorganize the illustrations um, because I wanted some play in uh, what I would, how I would create the arc of the story. But I still had some problems. I kept shuffling the illustrations and not really sure what I was doing until I thought, you know, if, if these children could speak directly to the earth, what mm. would they say? And I realized that they would be asking questions because you, you, can, you can learn a lot scientifically about the earth, but you, but you might wonder about something like, what does it feel like to have moonlight shining on only one side of you or something like that? Yeah. And so I realized the voice would be the children and they would be asking questions of the earth. So that's, that's when I finally found the voice of the story. And then I started, of course, researching. Many voices. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> collective voice. <laughs> yes, the collective voice. So, so many of your books um, look at things that are overlooked. Uh, you, you kind of take a moment to dive in deeper and show us the, the tiny things, the, the swirls and, and such. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of different because you go from microcosm to macrocosm. So uh, how did yeah. that work? How was that, how was that too, as a, as a writer? Well, it, I always find natural processes really fascinating. And so I just kind of pulled back and um, got a bigger look at everything and realize that the earth is a system just like yeah. an animal or a plant and that things are constantly moving and replenishing themselves. And I wanted most of all to create a feeling of having a bond between the reader and the earth. I had this wonderful Robin Wall Kimmerer um, quote in my head about, you can love the, the earth, and you can feel a bond with it. But until you truly feel the earth loving you back and mm. creating everything you need, then that bond isn't truly cemented. So I wanted to give the kids a feeling of intimacy, um, the sense that the earth has everything we need and has fostered us for millions of years um, and have them take a sense of responsibility for that, for that bond between them and the earth. So I pulled back, I looked at big systems, and yet I tried to make it intimate by 
uh, speaking directly in second person to the earth itself. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and it's so important that connection to nature and, mm. and the pandemic is an interesting in that some, some families and children have been able to use that to have more connections, you know, go for, let's yeah. go for a hike since we can't, you know, go to a movie or whatever. And then others who may not have the same level of privilege have less opportunity. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's just an interesting thing to think about in the context mm -hmm. of this moment in time and where we are. So Absolutely. science and poetry seem to really mm -hmm. be together. Um, <laughs> you've done this so beautifully in so many books. What, Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about um, how you arrived at that? Because that's not, it isn't something that would naturally, I think, have occurred to, to us mm -hmm. 40 years ago. Um, you've made it popular. You've, you've won Cyber Newberry. You've, your books have been honored by the Caldecott. So you certainly have made this your, your space, but there are other wonderful creators doing this as well. What is it about science and poetry that just sings? I think... When I grew up, there was an opposition between science and poetry that if you learn the true scientific aspect of something, it would take away the magic of it. But I mm -hmm. think in latter years, we've learned to look at that science and realize how complex and amazing it is and still retain that feeling of magic about it. And I feel that poetry with its um, ability to combine thought and feeling and rhythm is really a good medium for that because you can look at things, you can look at the stars and you can feel um, maybe a imagistic or poetic tie to them, but you can also think about those huge bodies of gas that are revolving and about time stretching before and afterwards. And, and you just feel awe. And I think poetry is great at expressing that kind of wonder and awe. Yeah, those are both authentic responses. You know, you're yeah. the interest right. and the awe, both. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. So what are some suggestions you may have for librarians and teachers who may want to share Hello Earth I mean, obviously, children can write letters to the earth themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but are there other things that, that, or maybe there's a context or a way to frame that that you thought of? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, um, just the cover itself, you can show to children and, and realize that the illustrator has made this little group of animals and people on the top of this earth and ask kids, you know, who would you put up here to kind of represent earth for us? And, um, and also some of the questions that are in here, even just starting by saying to children, what do you know about the earth? Because I asked myself this and I realized that I, you know, I kind of had an idea of how tides worked, but it's pretty complicated. <laughs> and so ask them about the moon what, is involved <laughs> yeah right the moon's involved but there was one on each side and you know yeah. ask them what they know so that they they realize that they have knowledge about the earth and then um and then afterwards ask them what they have learned or what they were surprised about and what you think the, the earth might answer because there are poems like this one about um, the history of Earth. And my final answer, my final line from the poem is, Earth, you must have a very long memory. Which was your favorite part? Ooh. So I think with each poem, there's an opportunity for children to answer and, um, and that will trigger them thinking about whatever the subject of the poem is and maybe gain some understanding. And, and also in the back of this book, there are lots of resources. There's um, uh, paragraphs on each subject that I write about. And there are also some links in the back so that kids could become citizen scientists. They could take their notebooks out into the field and actually submit their research, their observations to um, websites that are collecting that. That's so. empowering. 
That's great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Joyce Sidman, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. It has been such a pleasure and hello earth. Please everyone greet the earth. And this is just another way that you can do that. Thanks. Thank so you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.